And I entitled the message today, God's Holy Word. God's Holy Word. If you have a bulletin and want to follow with us in the outline, let me give you the outline. Uh, and we will be in Psalm 119 if you want to turn there, Psalm 119. Number one, obey God's Word. I know it sounds simple, but not, you know, we don't always do that. All right? Obeying God's Word is so important. Number two, memorize God's Word. I'll show you the importance of memorizing God's Word. And number three, meditate on God's Word. Meditate. And you don't hear that word a lot uh, in, in our society, but it is extremely important uh, that we meditate on the Word of God. You know, we, be, we have begun a new year, 20. Uh, 22, and one tradition that many people observe, observe and try to commit to is a New Year's resolution. Another name, and I had not heard that till this week, a fresh start effect. All right, it's amazing how they can spin words <laughs> instead of saying New Year's resolution, a fresh start effect. And it is a time where people look at their lives and decide if it's time to make it, make some changes for the better. I realize many people will not make New Year's resolutions because they know they will eventually break it. But if God tells you by the way of the Holy Spirit you need to make some changes in your life, then you really need to seriously concerning, consider making those resolutions. We all should have as our number one goal in life to be more like Jesus. My prayer uh, for all of us is to seriously consider exactly what God wants us to do and be in 2022. My New Year's resolution is to spend more time in God's holy word and reading Christian books and less time watching TV. And I'm, I'm not against TV, folks. I'm really not. But if you looked at the amount of time you watch TV and the amount of time that you spend with the Lord, it can easily get way out of balance. Let's look at the importance of God's Word being a huge influence in our lives. In Psalm 119, starting verse 9, obey God's Word. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your Word. And folks, there are two times that you should always begin uh, what you are doing with confession, all right? You should pray. When you pray, you should confess. The first thing you should do is to confess your sins, all right? Because God already knows what you've done, and if you want to be an, effect, an effective prayer warrior, you have to do business with God. And folks, we all need to be cleansed. We don't all walk with God all the time. There are things that pop into our heads. There are attitudes that we have sometimes. There are actions that we do sometimes that do not reflect our Lord and Savior. And so it's important that we uh, understand how important cleansing is to our daily process in life. Cleansing is important. So we start our prayers, and the other thing, we should start our Bible study with confession also. And the biggest mistake I believe people make in reading the Word of God is they go too fast. And I'm going to uh, expand on that, the, the, the meditating on that. But folks, when we come to reading God's Word, we shouldn't do it to check off a box. Okay, We should block out time. We should turn off all our devices, okay? We should take our time and spend time with God. And folks, God already knows what you have done. God already knows the sin in your life, so you're not telling him anything that he doesn't already know. He wants you to confess. He wants you to have a clean heart. And that is so important in opening up the Word of God. If you have hate in your heart, if you have malice in your heart, if you have these things in your heart, you're not going to understand the Word like you should. 
Hold your finger there and go to John chapter 1. 1 John, excuse me. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John 1, verse 8. 1 John 1, 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. All right? Folks, every one of us sin. We sin pretty much every day. Remember what James says. James says, he that knoweth to do good and does not, it is a sin. It is a sin. So we all sin. And if you say you're without sin, I, the Word of God, well, I'll let you listen to what the Word says. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. You're lying. It's all, I mean, that's really what it's saying. If you say, and, and people will say, oh, I didn't sin all day. What? Well, I never got out of bed. Well, you just sin because you're lazy. All right? So we all sin. Can I, I, folks, I've got to understand. You, I, you must get this. If you are a sinner, would you say amen today? Amen. Oh, you didn't convince me on that. <laughs> that was not everybody. If you are a sinner today, say amen. amen. All right. That was totally across the room. We're all sinners. If we confess our sins, folks, God is waiting for you to confess waiting for you. And I'm telling you, you need to confess for your own sake. It's not judging everybody else. It's like pointing the finger. You know what my grandma said? You point that one at me and there's three pointing right back at you. Admit it and quit it. Okay? Confess. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And here's the word, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Folks, sin blocks communication with God. Sin blocks intimacy with God. Sin blocks right relationships with others. And we need to be quick to confess our sin every night, every night, every night, every night. I take time to confess my sin to God. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Folks, cleansing should be the same way you take a shower. I hope you shower and bathe every day. I hope you do that. And we also need to be cleansed within. So cleansing is such an important part. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Folks, we have to read the word of God. We have to listen to the word of God. We have to obey the word of God. We have to apply the word of God. It is so important. The word of God is our lifeline. The word of God is everything we believe. The word of God is his words to us as if he was sitting beside us, if he was in the building with us. I'm telling you, if Jesus appeared and was behind this pulpit, we would be spellbound, waiting to hear what he would have to say. Folks, you can, you can hear his word every day, but we get so busy with life, we let other things drown out the most important voice in our lives. We have to take the time. We have to heed the Word of God. Verse 10, With your whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Oh, folks, you can't casually read the Word of God. You know what casual readers are? They're casual Christians. Okay? Don't, don't go that second mile now, Mike. Uh, you're, you're a little in too intense about this, okay? Uh, all right, folks, we don't need to just casually read the Word of God. We need to study the Word of God. We need to apply the Word of God to our, our, our lives. And let me not wonder. Folks, our minds wonder. Our minds wonder. We have to focus. We have to take time. We have to read the passage more than once. We have to spend time in God's holy word. And we have to apply it to our lives. I understand reading it is good. If you read it, that is great. 
but you must apply it to your lives. Turn to the book of James, James chapter 1 with me. It talks about applying God's Word, not just reading it, but applying it to our lives. James 1 verse 21, therefore lay aside filthiness uh, the, and overflow of wickedness and receive the meat, with meekness the implanted Word. We have to receive the Word. If if we don't like what it says, we still need to receive it. We need to receive it. It's God's Word, the implanted Word. When you implant something, it becomes a part of you. That's, that's His Word, which is able to save your souls. Now here's verse 22. But be doers of the Word and not hearers only. Doers is action. Doers is application. Don't just read it. Do what the Word says. Deceiving yourselves. And folks, we naturally uh, look at others. We criticize others, but yet we don't even look at our own life sometimes and see how we are doing. We want to, and, and I truly believe sometimes we deceive ourselves. We're not as good as we think we are. And folks, I want to be not just good. Folks, I want to be holy. I want to be just. I want to be righteous like Jesus was. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and, go away and goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. There's something about bathroom mirrors they are magnified, all right? They show detail. One thing I don't like to do is when I first get up, look into the mirror. I look and I say, man, you're getting old, Mike. I think you had a couple of wrinkles today. You added some wrinkles. But you know something about a mirror? It never lies. A mirror never lies. And folks, the hardest thing for Christians to do is to walk up to that mirror and say, okay, okay, God, what's wrong with me? What am I missing here? What am I missing? I mean, you ladies, and Lori does it. She gets these big mirrors, and there's lights all around it. Why? Because she wants to examine her face. She wants to make sure everything's perfect. Okay? Folks, we need to do that with our spiritual lives. We need to be honest with God, and even honest with ourselves. If we read the Word of God and it doesn't change us, there is something wrong in our spiritual lives. Folks, anybody can call themselves a Christian. Anybody can say that they're saved. But the true test is the application. It's not, hey, I am glad you came today. I am so overjoyed that you're here today. But the real challenge is Monday through Saturday when we apply it to this world. Because, folks, I'm telling you, temptation is everywhere. We have three things. We have three battles going on in, in our lives. Number one is the battle with the world. The world says something, and Jesus says something else. The next battle is our flesh. Our flesh doesn't want to come under the submission of God. Our flesh wants to do what our flesh wants to do. And the third battle is with the devil himself. There's sometimes I think he waits till Saturday night at midnight to come and visit me. Why? Because I'm breaking the bread of life the next day. Folks, I'm telling you, it's a battle. And we need to be doers of the world. Look at verse 25. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. Folks, the Bible is perfect. It's perfect. God made it perfect and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. You want to bless 2022? You get your eyes and your heart and your head in the Word of God. You make it a point to study the Word, not just read it, to study it and apply it to life, and you will be blessed. One more, Psalm 1. Go to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. I love the very first Psalm. The Bible said, Blessed 
is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed, happy is the man, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Do you look forward to studying the Bible? Do you look forward to reading the Bible? Do you have a quiet time? Do you make time? And I am telling you this as your pastor, if you don't have time for that, you are too busy. You need to make time every day for the Word of God. And in His law, He meditates day and night. And He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season and whose leaves shall not wither and whatever He does shall prosper. I just showed you two things. You want to be blessed? You want to prosper? Get in the Word of God. But notice verse 2, the second part of that. And in His law, He meditates day and night. I've made this a practice in my own life. In the morning, I do our daily breads. Our daily breads are out here, and it's done by the day of the year. And by the way, also in the daily breads is a read the Bible through in a year. Two years ago, I challenged everyone to read through the Word of God, and God has told me this year also, I still found the old one that I had in, in, in my office. I had to look. I, I looked around and found it. And folks, that's what I do. I, I'm doing the daily bread in the morning, and I'm doing read through the Bible at night. That's what it says, meditate day and night. Folks, we need to start our day in the Word of God, and we need to end our day in the Word of God according to Scripture. So, obey God's Word. That is what Psalms, uh, Psalms is telling us. Now look back in our text. Psalm 119, verse 11. Not only should we obey God's Word, we need to memorize God's Word. Oh, I can't tell you how important memorizing something is. Do you know I know Bible verses that I learned in vacation Bible school? I still know them. I know songs that I learned in RAs. I still remember songs that we learned memorizing the Word of God is so, so important. Look at verse 11. Your Word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. How do you hide God's Word in your heart, folks? You memorize Scripture. I've told you several times that Steve and I, every week, every week, we have a Scripture memory. Just one verse. Just one verse that we memorize, and that we meditate on all week long. And I'm telling you what will happen, and, and it happens often, folks. The very verse that we are memorizing, we can apply that week, that week. So it's so important that we memorize. Folks, we memorize a lot of things. We memorize the salutes to the flag. We memorize songs. We memorize for school. We memorize... So it's important that we take time to memorize God's Word. Verse 12, Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I had declared all the judgments of your mouth. And here's what happens, folks. When you are tempted, and we are all going to be tempted, we need to be able to recall Scripture right then. You say, well, why, Mike? Because God made us where we can't think two thoughts at the same time. In that temptation, if we dwell in that temptation, we're going to give in to temptation. But if we start quoting Scripture, start quoting Scripture, then our mind leaves that temptation and we have victory over sin. See, it's not a sin to be tempted. It's not a sin. Read James. You can read the rest of James 1, and it'll tell you that. What sin is, is giving in to temptation. So that in those points where Satan or the world or our flesh tempts us, if we can quote Scripture, I am telling you, those urges go away. Jesus Christ himself was tempted by Satan. Look in Matthew chapter 4 with me. 
Matthew 4. Oh, this is so important, folks. Memorizing Scripture. I cannot tell you how important that is. One a week, anybody can do. And I'll even let you start this week with the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. If you can memorize that, you can memorize anything, folks. Memorize Scripture. Then Jesus was led up. Notice, by the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Okay? Nobody around. Nobody around. No people around to be tempted by the devil. He knew where he was going. He knew who was going to be there. And the Spirit told him to go anyway. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you, folks. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I did four days one time and thought I was going to die. I'm just being honest with you, folks. We do not fast enough. Even 24-hour fast, there's a cleansing part of that. And afterward, he was hungry. Yeah, he would hunger. I would be very, very hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, and folks, you have to realize this is Satan himself. Satan is not omnipresent. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. But Satan can only be at one place at one time. Most of your temptations are demonic. They are demonic. It's not Satan himself. And Satan came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made to bread. Could Jesus make those stones into bread? Sure he could. Sure he could. Why? I mean, his first miracle, he turned water into wine. All right? He walked on water. He raised the dead. The question was not, could he do this? But it, it was a temptation. Why? Because to begin his ministry, he had to take on man to finish his ministry on the cross. He was still man. Folks, he could have come down off the cross, but he didn't. Why? Because he came to die for you and I. He could have changed them stones into bread in a second. But that wasn't the point. The point was he was extremely hungry. And folks, I am telling you, Satan hits us in our weak points. Weak points. It's just like being on a diet. Folks, you have to spiritualize it to be successful at it. That is the only way I have been successful at it. You have to spiritualize it. It's, it's what God wants me to do. He wants me. My body is a temple of God. That's what you say. You have to do those things. But he answered, Jesus said, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. One, he was just a man, and he wasn't going to take advantage of others. Okay, because there are people that today that are hungry and they can't turn stones into bread. So Jesus' first point was, was I am a hundred percent man. But the the application is this, folks. We do not miss a meal. I'm telling you, we'll eat Thanksgiving feast and then about six o'clock, what do we have to eat tonight? Folks, what if we treated the bread of life. What if we treated God's Word like that? We never missed reading the Word. We always, every day, read and studied the Word. If we applied that, matter of fact, later on in the Gospels, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And folks, that's how important reading the Word of God is in your life. And we get slack in it, folks. I'm not getting on to you. I'm just saying that's why sometimes we are spiritually weak. That's why sometimes we give in to temptation because we not, have not started our day in the Word of God. We start our day and, and you just go out to the car and you have a flat tire and you go out there and kick the tire for some silly reason. And your day is ruined. All right? Satan's already got you where he wants you. You start in the Word. And it says, uh, 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 every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, if we would treat the Word of God as if God was speaking to ourselves, 
I'm telling you, it would change our lives. Look at the second thing. Then the devil took him up to a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of a temple. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, notice what he says, if. He's wanting to question Jesus. Throw yourself down. And then Satan quotes scripture. He shall give his angels charge over you. He's quoting Psalms 91, verse 11 and, 15, 11 and 12. But he goes on to say, In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you should dash your foot against a stone. What did he do? He quoted scripture, but he left a scripture out, a sentence out, a part of a sentence in all your ways. One phrase, one word can change the text totally. One word not can change a text. And I'm telling you folks, Satan will misquote scripture to you all the time. That's why it's important that we not only quote Scripture, but we can give the reference also. So, I mean, he misquotes Scripture, and, and Jesus obviously knew. Look at verse 7, and he said unto him, It is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, if he was up there some 500 feet above, and he jumped off, what is he saying? Could God save him? Sure he could. But folks, God gives us common sense. We don't need to be up on temples and jumping 500 feet below. That'd be like me going out on 71 and try to stop a semi. They would, they would lock me up, all right? You are tempting God with that, all right? Don't, and, and we need to understand, we need to be focused, and we need to know what the Word of God said. Satan quoted scriptures. Even James later on says in the book of James, uh, even the devil and the demons believe. They know God existed, but I'm telling you they're not spending eternity with him. So we have to be careful. And the other thing is you need to watch what you watch. Get your spiritual eyes and ears open to what someone says, what a preacher says, what a teacher says, because if it's opposite of what the Word... And again, probably the most confusing book in the Word of God is Revelation. All right, there's premillennialist, amillennialist, postmillennialist. You get all that? There's a lot of opinions there. But I'm talking about just blatant truths. If they go against the Word of God, folks, you don't need to be listening to that person. And with us memorizing the Word of God, it is very, very important. That way, when you have a temptation, that's why the first verses I memorized was Romans 6, 1 and 2. Look at Romans 6, 1 and 2. The first verses I learned to memorize. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer therein? And when a particular sin comes upon you, you can plug it in right there. Okay? What shall we say then? Shall I continue to lust that grace may abound? How can I, who am dead to lust, and when you start quoting Scripture, I'm telling you, the spiritual ears and eyes of God kick in, and when you start, you, you, you have victory over that. What shall I say then? Shall I continue to covet that grace may abound? You just plug in what sin you struggle with there and memorizing that, and it says there, certainly not. Folks, God doesn't want us sinning. But we sin. Why? Because we don't spend enough time in the Word of God. We sin. Why? Because we don't memorize the Word of God. You know what we need to be? We need to be a, a walking concordance, folks. I want to get in my life where someone asks me any question, anything that I can pull out of my head, the Scripture and the text. That is a goal that I have in my life. Every problem in life is in the Word of God. There is a solution to everything. But if we don't spend time there, and folks, we spend time doing a lot of things. One of the things I love to watch is Sports Center. Sports Center. I'll sit down and watch an hour of Sports Center. 
But do I spend time, and again, with my job, with study, and yes, I do spend more than that. But I'm simply saying, what is Sports Center going to do? All I know is, and, and by the way, didn't the Hogs do good yesterday? Praise the Lord, the Hogs. Yeah. But my question is, how is that going to change your life? The Word of God changes our life. The Word of God keeps us from sinning. It really does. So we need to obey the Word of God. We need to memorize the Word of God. Then look back in our text. We need to meditate on God's holy Word. And by the way, if you need a quote, this is a good one, and I don't remember where I got it. I would give them credit, but I don't remember. I just jotted it down in my Bible, and it's been here a long time. Sin will keep you from your Bible, or reading your Bible will keep you from sin. Isn't that good? Folks, that's worth writing down. Okay, I'll say it again. Sin will keep you from your Bible, or reading your Bible will keep you from sin. And if somebody knows who quotes that, give it to me and I'll write it down. All right, I just forgot to write it down. That is so, so important. So we need to obey God's Word. We need to memorize Word. The last thing is we need to meditate on God's Word. Look at verse 14. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts. I will contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statues. I will not forget your word. You know what? We forget things all the time. I walked into my closet last night and I thought, what did I come in here for? <laughs> Do you know why it's important that when you study the word that you write something down? Every time you study the word, you should write at least one thing down that you need to remember. One thing. Ladies call it journaling. Guys call it, we just write. We don't, no, we're too macho. We don't journal. No, no, no. We write. Okay. But when you study, you need the Word of God in your hand. You need a pencil and a piece of paper in your hand. And you should never close the Bible without at least writing down one thing that stuck out with you. You know what meditation is, folks? Meditation is dwelling on something. Meditation is pondering something, thinking deeply, not shallow thinking. It's deep thinking. Meditation is so important. And again, I'm not talking about humming or, you know, and stuff like that. All right. If that works for you, that's fine. I'm simply saying meditate. Slow down. Don't try to conquer. Read it slowly. Read it two times. Read it three times if necessary. Understanding is so, so important. It really is. We need to pray over Scripture. We need to pray over Scripture. We need to enjoy Scripture. Man, I love it when I'm looking for a Scripture and I can find it and uh, I'm looking for certain words. And folks, you, you need a concordance. Strong's concordance is one of the best things. If you are a teacher, you, you just need that in your library. You can just look up one word. Everywhere, everywhere that word is, they'll have a scripture reference for that. And so we need to meditate. We need to slow down. We need to have a quiet time. Quiet. Nothing on. Not some pods in your ears while it's going. Not a TV going. Okay? I mean Jesus was by himself. He was tempted, all right, by Satan himself, and he got victory over that. Deuteronomy 6. Go with me to Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Folks, it's not a casual friendship with God. It's an intimate relationship with God. And to know God, you have to know His Word. You have to know His Word. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Not just memorize words, 
But folks, when it gets in our hearts, it changes us. Folks, anybody can memorize a text. Anybody can. If they work hard enough, they can memorize it. But have that in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and to talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up. Oh, parents, it's so important that you have a family quiet time, a family time of reading the Bible together. And even grandparents, if you have time or if there's time where you can do that and stop and share some word or share a verse with One of your grandkids, it's so important. Verse 8, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. What does it mean? You're always looking at your hands, okay? Always. You're always looking, you know, with your eyes, okay? Have the Word of God all around you, and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. When you walk into my front door, if you look to your right on a wall, there's a verse, and it simply says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Folks, part of serving the Lord is reading the Word of God. It's spending time with God. It's having a quiet time. And I'm talking about an effective quiet time. And as we look at this, and, and, and one more scripture, Psalm 119, go back with me. One more scripture, and I'm through. Psalm 119, verse 97. Look at verse 97. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day long. Folks, do you know you can read your Bible on your lunch break? Of course, you want to eat first. I understand that. You're hungry. But eat spiritual food also. Through your, through, uh, you, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Then verse 105, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh, folks, the word of God lights up the world. The word of God is light. It makes you see things from God's point of view. Folks, the Word of God is the most important book in your library. And again, folks, if you're not having a quiet time, if you've slacked on that, my prayer is as we start this new year that you will make the Word of God a priority in your life. Father, thank you for this day. and. God, I thank you for this reminder. And God, I thank you that this is a new year. God, we have done good things this year. We have had victories this year. But God, we have also failed you in some way. And God, I thank you that we can come to this new year and we can start all over again. God, I know I failed you in areas. God, I know I haven't been the pastor and the husband and the father that I need to be. And God, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. God, it's on me. Lord, I can't blame anybody else. God, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. God, cleanse me, God. I was wrong in my sin. And God, I want to do better this year. I really do. God, I pray for those who just don't have a quiet time or have just slacked off from that. God, I pray that they would commit to that this day. God, there may be other decisions that need to be made today, other areas where you are talking to them right now. It could be a relationship. It could be an attitude. It could be a discipline, Lord. God, I thank you that you forgive us of our sins. I thank you that you cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And God, I thank you that we can start over today God, I pray that we would use this time not to look at anybody else. This invitation, I pray we would just focus on our own life and our own spiritual walk with you. So God, if there's a place that needs to be changed, speak to us, Lord. And God, I pray if there's one here that just they don't know for sure if they died, they're going to heaven. 
they don't really understand that intimate relationship with you, that connection with the Word of God, I pray they would come forward and give their heart and their life to Jesus Christ. God will be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?